Pamusta Po Malagayan Padatin Sa Our Mission House here in Tanza, Philippines. Uh, it is a beautiful day. It has been a, a beautiful day here in the Philippines. Currently it's 86 degrees, tropical. We've got late rain fallen. It's a Maganda Gabe for many of you here in the Philippines. And for many of you in different, uh, different locations, different continents, uh, your day is just beginning. So for many of you, uh, buenos dias. We're going to welcome you to a, a beautiful day with Jesus. As uh, believers know, every day with Jesus is better than the day before. My name is Frank Williams. My wife and I are missionaries of God the Father, Jesus Christ, His Son, under the anointing and direction of the Holy Ghost. We follow Jesus' directions, brag on Jesus, and these signs shall follow those that believe. There is evidence that follows, and we also have that promise, yes, or lo, I am with you always, even until the very end. So we have that promise that He is with us, He never leaves us or forsakes us, and that signs will follow those that believe. And so His anointing continues to flow, never stopped. From uh, Resurrection Day, it continues to flow every day uh, till the present day. The anointing still flows. The blood of Jesus has never lost its uh, power. For reaches from the highest mountains, and it flows to the lowest valleys. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. He will never lose its power, its authority. For reaches from the highest mountains. And it flows to the lowest valleys. It's his blood that gives me strength from day to day. He will never lose his power. I want to say hello to those from uh, Monrovia, Liberia. We've heard from people uh, in Kenya in several other uh, locations in Africa. Those uh, are friends in India, Pakistan, and Pastor uh, Odell Varanis in Cuba, Pastor Renato in uh, Cuba, Pastor Pablo in Cuba, several people throughout the United States, Gary, and uh, uh, Mr. Simon, different ones of you throughout the United States. We brag on Jesus and signs continue to follow. Evidence follows. Uh, I want you to turn uh, quickly to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew uh, chapter 9, the Gospel of uh, Matthew, uh, chapter 9, beginning with verse, uh, verse 35. Giving you a few minutes to find that here. And uh, we're in the Gospel of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, chapter.
this is very important. And uh, please share this with others who have a heart to do the work of the Lord. There are many people that he has called to uh, brag about Jesus, to serve Jesus. You are the one. Yes, you. I'm pointing at you. Point at yourself. I'm talking to you. The Word of God tells us that you are the letter. You are His letter. Known by all who know you. You have influence. You are the one He has selected. You are the letter. Known and read by all who know you. And He has made you able ministers of this New Testament written not on tablets of stone but on the fleshy tables of the heart written by the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to you and uh, we're talking about uh, what is happening here and in the Philippines every day at uh, uh, 714 uh, Central U.S. time, I uh, gather with uh, intercessors from around the world uh, in uh, uh, 714 St. Louis time uh, in the morning. That for us, a lot of times that's uh, 814, 7, uh, 914, because where our time zone is, uh, uh, we're 12, 12 hours ahead of the east coast of the United States, and there's intercessors from around the world, and they begin to intercede, brothers and sisters, interceding for the move of God to fall upon uh, men and women of God full of the Holy Ghost who will be brag enough to brag, uh, bold enough to brag on Jesus. And so many of you are able to participate in this intercessory uh, prayer time. Um, you can uh, message, uh, send us a message and we can uh, help you to find out what time that would be in your time zone. But it's time to uh, for believers to get serious and to get serious about uh, what we do in the name of the Lord. So, uh, Gospel of Matthew chapter 9. Uh, beginning with uh, verse, uh, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So, the Word of God tells us that Jesus was zealous. He was full of energy. And uh, if you're called to be one of His students, uh, if you are called to be one of His, He writes in uh, Luke 4, 18, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. If you are a believer, you are called to share and brag on Jesus to those with whom you have influence. And if, if you have the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. He has called us to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those who are captive, that you don't be, have to be held prisoner by the mistakes of your parents. You don't have to be held prisoner by the mistakes of your past. That in Jesus Christ you can be 
born again, you can get a brand new start in Jesus. Uh, Jesus gives to us uh, forgiveness of sin. See, with sin in our life, we're doomed to eternal life in hell. We're, for without Jesus, we can uh, do nothing. Uh, he, Jesus tells us uh, in the uh, Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Salvation is only through Jesus Christ. So Jesus was zealous, and he went all about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues. He had to go into places where he was not previously scheduled to be teaching or preaching. He went into other uh, locations, and he had to allow the Holy Spirit to give him room and opportunity to speak. So he went into their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. That is why it's important Jesus promised, yes, I am with you always. We need that now presence, that immediate presence of His grace uh, and His power uh, with us at all times. He says, I am with you always. We know that with Jesus, nothing shall be impossible. So, um, uh, they, Jesus went uh, preaching and teaching and praying for the sick. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, they were tired, they were weary, and they were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Jesus teaches us that the thief, who is Satan, comes but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. And since 2019, Satan has done a good job of that. So many people are uh, left behind by the quarantine and the uh, depression, the financial depressions. And uh, many people were put in, in prison, financial prison. They were put in uh, uh, prison as far as their future is concerned, their hope for tomorrow. Uh, people feel hopeless and they feel lost. And uh, Jesus uh, looked at them as sheep having no shepherd. That describes the world and the situation that we face to j today. And uh, Jesus said to his disciples, to those students, he says to you, he, wherever you are in this planet, he says to you today, this is for you. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. I can tell you, here in the Philippines, that the fields are ripe and they are ready for harvest. We've been cooperating with the pastors of Christ, the strong foundation churches in, uh, in the province of Cavite and in Laguna 
and uh, in uh, Tondo, and the Holy Spirit is moving. People are being born again in all of our services. Uh, they are full packed, uh, and many times they're standing room only. We've gone to bigger venues, bigger uh, uh, places, and uh, the crowds are still uh, packing out the venues. The Holy Spirit is moving. People are being touched by the power of God. They're being uh, born again. And the problem that we have is we can't move fast enough. Uh, we're having trouble keeping up uh, with, uh, with the demand because the God gospel is free, but at the expenses for using the venues to feed the hungry people, to uh, have a place for people to sleep, and to recover and help people uh, complete their education, what they need to do to be uh, fully operable and equipped for the Lord to do His will. Uh, that costs money uh, in uh, many of the times all of our transportation is full we don't have enough vehicles uh, to pick people up and take them to the services and um, again all of the venues we have to there's money ex involved in there in and the venues have been packed out, and um, we need help. The fields, people wanting to turn their lives over to Jesus are full, but the laborers, the help that we need is few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send people just like you out into the uh, fields, out to do the harvest. You are the one that He has called. You are the one that He has called to have influence where you live. Now, Jesus knows you just don't take people with no training and throw them into the work of God. There are some people who believe they are called to preach, but they only see the, the pastor uh, speaking on Sunday morning. They don't know that there's study involved. They don't know that uh, most had to go out and knock on doors and... Uh, brag on Jesus to find out about the promises of Jesus are true. His promises are real. His anointing continues to flow today. So uh, you've got to be skilled enough, full enough of the Holy Ghost that when the money is not Plenty when you don't have plenty of money that you can allow the Holy Spirit to use you to build His work even when there is not a whole lot of money. In the uh, Philippines, uh, we were under for two years nationwide uh, quarantine. So we had to adapt what we were doing to reach people in, uh, for, for Jesus. And even during this nationwide quarantine, God continued to have His hand upon us, and He continued to bless our, our ministry. You have to be able to 
minister even without a crowd. You have to be prepared to start with just one or two people. You have to lead your first person to the Lord. You have to cooperate with others. Where do you see this in Scripture? Well, it's found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter uh, 4, uh, verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. So Jesus called out to them, and he's calling out to many of you. Your heart is stirred. You want to do more to brag on Jesus. I'm going to encourage you to do this where you are. Follow the leading of the Holy Ghost, even though gas prices are high. The cost of food is high. Uh, so the commitment to the Lord has to be complete. It has to be total. It needs to flow from the abundance of your heart because it's not an easy thing to do. You have to be willing to obey Jesus and get out of the boat. Yes, you have to be willing to leave the safety of the boat and get out and walk with the Lord outside of the boat. Peter was able to do that. The Lord has helped uh, me to be able to do this uh, walking on financial water since since uh, December of uh, 2018. It can be done. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. You have to be willing to take risk. You have to be willing to gamble. But it's not really a gamble because you're walking with the Lord Jesus. But Jesus uh, says to them, Peter and Andrew, and he says to you today, If you follow a uh, pastor or a teacher or an evangelist or whatever five-fold ministry, you're going to have to get out of the boat. You're going to have to get out of the boat. You have to go out and encourage people to take risks. Follow me. Follow the pastor. Fo follow the prophet get out of your boat get out of the safety of your boat take a risk you have to open up your mouth and brag on Jesus if you are ashamed of me before men I will be ashamed of you before my father which is in heaven Jesus says if if you uh, believe in him you will not be ashamed. You will not be scared. You will not be afraid. But he says, follow me and I will teach you to become fishers of men. And the more that you pray privately, the Bible tells us that our God who hears and sees you praying privately in your secret place he will reward you openly God has continued to bless us here in the Philippines people are being uh, born again and uh, they need to be scheduled to for uh, baptism in water uh, it's not an easy thing to do in uh, many places of the Philippines they have to be scheduled so we can get a arrange for a safe place for people 
to engage in water baptism. And it's been even harder during the uh, uh, quarantines. They've been nationwide. But God has continued to build his church. And we need your help. Uh, some of you uh, need to get busy in your local church and help your local pastor. If you're a child of God, you tithe to the work of God. But if you're called to do ministry, it's going to cost you more than just your tithe. You have to be able to, you need to be prepared to give sacrificially. You need to be able to give above, above your tithe and depend on Him for supernatural increase, for supernatural provision. There are some right now, God has a call on your life. And you've known it for many times, but you've not stepped out of the boat. You look at the gasoline prices and the food prices, and you say, how am I going to make it to church on Sunday? How am I going to make it to worship? But if you're called for ministry to do a work of God, you have to, you, you have to from the abundance of your heart, it must flow from your heart, you must tithe and you need to be prepared to give offerings above your tithe. But it needs to uh, Brothers and sisters, um, I'm talking to people right now. And you know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Now, you uh, may not be able to do as much as you would like to in your local church, but the opportunity is there. And some of you feel called to a speaking ministry, a real ministry. You need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and uh, partner with this missionary ministry, partner with us here in the Philippines. Maybe the Lord will lead you to come spend some time here in the Philippines or you can work with your local church, but you need to take action today. And I believe that as you step forward and give from your heart, from the abundance of your heart to the work of God that you're planting seed in your own ministry. Because Jesus says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick or when I was in prison, you came to visit me. And you might say, Lord, when did we see you in this condition? And Jesus says, just like you did it for one of these. These who, you they didn't look important. They didn't look like your neighbor. They didn't look like the people in the next zip code. But just like you did it for one of these, you've done it unto me. And he tells you that you are ready for your reward. And there's a reward waiting for you from the Lord. Be obedient. Give as unto the Lord. Contact us. Communicate with us. Uh, it may be that we know ministers in your area that can uh, help you or if you want uh, you can navigate with us here in the Philippines and we can help you with that from here we can help you with that from here so um, Father I thank you for your people 
who give from the abundance of their heart. Lord, I know that gasoline prices and food prices are high, but Father, their commitment to you is high. And Father, I ask you to help them to do their very best according to what they can do and still help those in where they live. We thank you, Father. We want to lead millions into the kingdom of heaven and place those people in good apostles so that they can learn how to be evangelists, how they can be disciples students of the Word of God and uh, do what Jesus has called us all to do. He tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Communicate with us. Write with us. Communicate and share this, please with people to whom you think this message can minister so that they can be the man or woman of God that He has called for them to be. You know who you are. We look forward to hearing from you. May God uh, bless you via Candios, wherever you go, whatever you do. Make sure God goes with you. We'll talk to you, God willing, very soon.